Hello fellow mudlers, Bruce here. What we have here is a Mantua 260 Mogul and uh, you've seen this little gal before. Uh, she was the star of the video I did on how to remove paint from um, one of your model locos or any model for that matter. And uh, I, at the end of that video I showed you her running around the Christmas tree, and that's now two Christmases ago, or um, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. And uh, she's quite a good runner. And at some point while running around the Christmas tree, she threw a uh, drive rod. And let me just show you the other side. First of all, there's what it should look like. So that's some nice valve gear going on on this model. And over here, I think you can see some rods hanging off the bottom here. And what happened was a, uh, the screw that was holding it onto this drive wheel uh, came out, worked its way out. I had this thing cranking around the oval under the Christmas tree for quite a while before that happened, but I guess it kept working its way out. And, uh, you know, note to myself, um, when I buy these used locos, among the things I should always do is uh, check to make sure that all the screws holding the uh, connecting rods and so forth together are well seated, which I did not do in this case. So, um, in this video, oh, and in that first video, after I took the paint off, I said, you know, it was winter time and uh, wait for the warmer weather to go out in the garage and uh, hit it with the rattle can. Well, here's two years later, and probably because of what happened here with the uh, connecting rods and stuff. I put it up on a shelf and forgot about it. So uh, now I pulled it down off the shelf. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. We are going to, uh, I think, take this shell off, and I'm going to put it into some lacquer thinner to get the last remnants of anything off. Scrub it good, and then paint it and letter it and show you that it's a good runner again. In the meantime, I'll do a little bit of review of what we talked about about this loco in the first video. I'll put some, cut that into pieces and include it in this video. And then we will we'll proceed with the fix and then take care of uh, painting this. Follow along. So we will see exactly what we have here. Okay. Rid of this packing material. And let's see exactly what we got here. So the vintage appears to be um, a transition period where the tender is plastic with the uh, die cast underframe, but the entire cab is uh, die cast. Um, paint, several coats, layers of it, it looks like, is uh, definitely peeling and coming off. Um, you see there the valve gear. Yeah, let's see. Say it runs. Let's uh, perhaps put it in the cradle here, upside down. Put some leads on the uh, appropriate wheels and see what's what. So, let's see here. Well, son of a gun. Does indeed run.
Well, here's that 260 mogul with the paint stripped, the engines, the motor serviced, and the running mechanism lubed, and all ready for the paint shop. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, since I paint in the garage, that's going to have to wait until springtime. But in the meantime, put this one away and uh, get on to the next project. Overall, a really nice loco for $25 brought back to life. All right, let's get back to this uh, mogul and fixing the uh, connecting rods and drive rods here on the the ones that came apart. Luckily when they came apart it was running on hardwood floor as you saw in the video around the Christmas tree. And I was able to find both the uh, screw that came loose and there was a small bushing. You can see it in the bottom of this plastic which I was able to find. Now if we look at the side where everything is still together you see a connecting rod right here against the wheel. Then you see that bushing, and then a drive rod, and then finally uh, another drive rod on the outside. So when I put this back together now, I have to take that bushing um, and put it between these two rods, as you can see here. So it goes between the inner connecting rod and the first drive rod and then insert the screw and then tighten everything down. So shouldn't be all that difficult, but as with anything, I've already been picking this little piece up with tweezers, had it fly off, and I'm on my hands and knees looking in the carpet for it. So I've got to be a little careful with it. And uh, you now while, we, while we're talking about this mogul, I guess moguls in general are you know, probably in the history of Steam locomotives, especially in the United States, they were the second major design, or maybe the third, I guess you could say. You had the, uh, you know, 440s, four Americans, and then uh, you had the 10 wheelers, the 460s. Those were all somewhat predating uh, the Mogul. But these Moguls, uh, you know, the 260 wheel configuration started to appear right around uh, the Civil War. And up through 1920, they were still being made and used by a lot of railroads. And, um, you know, I guess uh, they numbered in the thousands. I saw one figure say about 11,000 of these had been made. So very popular uh, before they started to get replaced by much larger locomotives. But uh, I'm anxious to get this one uh, fixed up and back on the rails. Alrighty, let's see if we can fix those uh, drive rods and connecting rods. Okay, with a minimum amount of fumbling around, I do have the uh, drive rods and connecting rods connected again. And I've taken the shell off because I want to get the remaining bits and pieces you can see here and there some remnants of uh, black paint. I'm going to put that into the lacquer thinner for a couple hours. And I have some power hooked up here to this uh, loco, so let's see how she runs. And that was the side, I think, that had come apart. Here's the other side. We have it running. We'll call that good. You can see, and I've given you this tip before, when you take the uh, locomotive boiler and stuff off, the castings for the uh, cylinders it wants to fall apart and you would lose you know, all your connecting rods and valve gear and everything, so you put a temporary nut on there just to kind of hold everything together until you put it back together again. 
So that's good as it is. Time for an update. Uh, since you last saw this uh, boiler and cab uh, casting, which is uh, all die cast, uh, I got the rest of the paint off and I have repainted it. And uh, that's just got to be lettered yet. So that I'm setting aside. <coughs> I've been working on uh, tweaking the side rods and the valve gear. Um, on the underframe because they were hanging up and uh, I adjusted some and rebent some and um, got it so that it rarely hangs up now but rarely hanging up is still no good and I think I have discovered the problem and uh, know what I have to do but um, On the side that had come apart, that I put back together, the rivet holding this top rod in place to this vertical rod is very, very loose. It's sloppy as can be. You can see it wobbling back and forth. And when it wobbles just the right way, uh, it gets hung up on uh, the crosshead uh, down here, the plastic casting. So what I have to do, and there's no two ways about it, I got to do it. I have to take uh, the all of the side rods off this side so that I can get to the back side of that rivet and then take my trusty uh, rivet tool, go to the back of my vise, the anvil on the back of my vise, and tap that rivet down to uh, get rid of that slop and then reassemble everything. Taking it down is not a problem. The problem is reassembly. Uh, trying to get all this stuff lined up with only two hands. So might have to call on my dear wife Bonnie to give a hand there to reassemble it. But uh, yeah, for the most part, it works fine. And then every once in a while, if the slop goes just, uh, just hung up, watch, see the wheels are not turning. So uh, yeah, gotta do it. All right, now before I do that, I just want to say one other thing. I'm becoming more and more convinced that this did not begin life as a mogul. Uh, yeah, I got the uh, front trucks off right now, the front truck off, but uh, it looks like a 260 now, but I think it began life as a uh, Prairie 262. And let me tell you why I think that. Uh, first of all, there's plenty of room back there for the, uh, on the rear side for the trailing truck. But beyond that, I have in my collection uh, instructions for the prairie, uh, in, including a uh, view of the uh, side rods on, the, on their model of the prairie. And I have the instructions for uh, the mogul. And although you can't see it very well, I don't think in this picture, the side rods here really don't have any fancy uh, valve gear at all and uh, it does on the prairie. So this kind of arrangement on the uh, uh, valve gear was what they produced on their prairie. So I'm pretty sure this is a prairie who at some point lost its trailing truck, uh, either on purpose or by accident. And uh, I'm happy to leave it that way because it ran very well under the Christmas tree. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to let you know. But uh, they did produce a mogul, but amongst other things in the front, it had these, uh, the wire support that came down that is not here on this kit either. So yeah, I think it's uh, a prairie that's been uh, clipped down a little bit. All right, I'll come back to you after I've uh, gone through the frustration of taking the side rods off and uh, tightening the rivet. Talk to you then. Okay, I want to uh, remove the side rods on this uh, little baby. And I think if I loosen, not loosen, but remove this crank pin just to get this uh, main rod here off and then put that crank pin back in then 
loosen the cylinder assembly to the point where I can get everything removed from it, all the side rods and so forth, I can have the piece that I need to repair in my hand. So let's see if I can do that. What I would like to do, if I could, is loosen this enough to get it out without letting the other side fall to bits. I think that's a fat chance. Not the end of the world, but... Okay, that side is still in place. And I gotta put this back in to hold that in place and I can get the crank pin off. Now the offending rivet can barely be seen. Yeah, that's one of the problems of trying to repair these after they've been assembled. When you put them together, you put them together in a very specific order <clears throat> so that you can reach everything. Trying to fix one after the fact is not always so easy. Alrighty, I'm going to get my rivet tool, which is actually right here. This came out of a uh, Bowser kit. Get some metal here to whack it down on and see if I can fix it. Talk to you soon. This is only about uh, seven or eight minutes later, um, and I think I have it reassembled and I have yet to have it hang up. Certainly a lot of that slop. I mean, you're always going to have to have some movement or the darn side rods and connecting rods and valve gear and everything wouldn't you know, move the way they were supposed to. But I think, I think we have it fixed. And if we do, 
I'm going to put the motor on and let it run for a while and see if we run into any problems. The main problem last time was when I ran it in reverse. That's when she would tend to hang up. Well, let's put that motor on and see. Yeah, I've had it running slowly forward now for several minutes. Let me just speed it up a little bit. Again, now you're looking on this side, at the near side, is the side where the side rod had come off under the Christmas tree and where I had to tighten up the rivet. Alright, let's try her in reverse. This is where she used to give me trouble. Might have to adjust the uh, amount that the worm gear is interacting with the drive gear. But as far as the sloppiness in the valve gear, it looks like we've solved the problem. All right, I'll continue with the restoration. Talk to you soon. Well, it's almost time for the great reveal when I put this uh, Mantua maybe 260, maybe 262 onto the tracks and give it a test run. But I just wanted to show you that I had room here to drill and tap a uh, 256 uh, hole and uh, therefore install a KD a draft gear box and a, a KD number 26 long shank uh, insulated shank uh, coupler. So I have a working coupler now on the front of the loco. Alrighty, I will now go put this on the tracks and I'll see you over there. Now here we are with the uh, what I think is a make believe uh, Mantua mogul, um, all fixed up again painted, um, lettered as number six on the Lehigh and New England Railroad, and uh, it's on a branch of the My Jersey Highlands Railroad that would have been served by the Lehigh and New England, and that's the Bangor Slate um, line. And uh, Lehigh and New England serviced in the real world Bangor, Pennsylvania. So we want to now see whether this little guy will run. Let me get ready to pan a little bit here. There we are. Nice and slow. And in reverse. Okay, let's see how that uh, front coupler works on picking up some cars. There you go. Just make some final comments and the video can end. It's always enjoyable to uh, finish up the restoration of one of these old uh, classic Mantua uh, or Tyco locomotives and uh, get it running reliably so that it can join the roster. Uh, speaking of enjoying, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you've not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you again soon.